but we are living, we are dwelling in a grand and awful time. This is not an easy time to be alive, and that is why this is the best time to give our hearts to Jesus. This is the best time to be washed in His precious blood, because as we always say in the hymn, lift up the trumpet and loud let it ring, Jesus is coming again. Cheer up, ye pilgrims, be joyful and sing, Jesus is coming again. The first subject tonight is marching up the mountain. Now, a mountain could be a physical mountain, all right? Or it could be a symbolic mountain. I, I met a guy recently. He was marching up the mountain of his brother's cancer. The brother had cancer, and he told me he didn't know what to do. He was just in a mess. He just didn't know what to do. And he said, and by the way, he's not a Seventh-day Adventist, but God has people everywhere, amen? God has people everywhere. Even the Roman Catholic Church, the Presbyterian Church, the Hindu, you know, temple, the Imam's mosque. God has people everywhere. Even those who don't believe in Him, God has people everywhere. He's an awesome God. He's a trustworthy God. You know, I tell people, God is not only in the prayer hearing business, but God is in the prayer answering business. So God answers our prayers. You could pray at morning or at noontime or at night time. You could pray at sunset and pray at sunrise. God is in the prayer answering business. God is concerned about his people. So a mountain could be symbolic. You have cancer as a medical mountain. Amen. Your children giving you trouble. That's a sociological problem. I'm saying to you that there are mountains we have to face. I remember I, I climbed Mount, Mount El Tukush, all right, second highest mountain in Trinidad. I climbed that mountain about six times, going to Las Cuevas, going to Maracas. I want to test myself out just now, but I climbed that mountain several times. Now, the highest mountain in the world is known as Mount Everest. That's the highest mountain. It's over 29,000 feet high, and there are a lot of dead bodies on that mountain, People who tried to overcome that mountain. First ascenders of Mount Everest. And that's called, the names Edmund Hillary. He was a mountain climber. And Tenzing Norgay was the Sherpa. All right, those are the guys who carry the, you know, the bags on their backs uh, while the mountain climbers, uh, all right, the professionals uh, walk through the trail. Now, how many people have died trying to climb Mount Everest? According to the latest figure, 310 persons died, all right, in Mount Everest. They are buried in the snow. I think they are well preserved. That's what ice does. Uh, but they are buried up there. They will wake up, some to the first resurrection. I hope most of them. And some to the second resurrection. Most of them are still in the mountain. 310 of them. We move on, ladies and gentlemen. God is an awesome God, and God knows what he is doing. Elijah is our topic tonight. He had several mountains to conquer. A mountain can be physical or symbolic. It can be a medical mountain. It could be just a raw physical mountain. It could be a family mountain. It could be an economic mountain. Your bank account is being reduced. I hear that all the time, that a big mountain right now happens uh, to be financial. And then you have the mountain of loneliness. I, I heard about a situation, I have to be careful what I'm saying here, because it's right close home here. But a guy who had died, and when they checked out his home, no current, no electricity. I mean, that guy had to be suffering from a loneliness mountain. Then you have the mountain of demons, all right? And by the way, all over the world right now, the devil is an overdrive because he knows he has but a short time. And then you have the mountains of immorality. Watch this carefully here. You have the mountains of immorality. That, that is huge, the LGBTIQ, TUV, WXYZ agenda. That is a huge issue in the space of public affairs. Remember, it is public affairs and religious liberty. It is not just religious liberty. It's public affairs. So what is taking place, you know, in the sphere of immorality must be of concern to us. 
And of course, in the time of Elijah, you had the sacrifice of virginity. Most experts believe that what got Elijah mad was that Jezebel and her 850 imported prophets, let me say that again, Jezebel and her 850 prophets, all right, of, of, of demons, all right, they had encouraged the young girls, the virgin girls in Israel to compromise, to sacrifice their virginity. And that was done also on Mount Carmel. Now that, that is a significant point I'm raising there. So you have the mountains of loneliness. You have the mountains of demons. You have the mountains of immorality. And you have the mountains like the sacrifice of virginity. And that's a huge thing that is taking place. In fact, I will give you an experience of that tonight. So mountains, Elijah had to conquer. And he had faith in God. Could I tell you something tonight? Faith in God still makes a difference. Yeah, whether you're, you're rich or poor, faith in God makes a difference. Whether you're qualified or unqualified, faith in God makes a difference. Let's go to story of, the story of Elise Parler. You know, when I bounced up this story, I was in Suriname. But this thing took place in California. And I want to tell you something. If you listen to the British Broadcasting Corporation today, you would realize that nothing has changed. In fact, Stephen Sakur, who is the key and lead interviewer on the BBC, was talking to the mayor of San Francisco. And he told her, and I, I would never forget this, he says San Francisco is fabulously wealthy and fabulously dysfunctional. From one drug alone, mountain, mountain of addiction, from one drug alone in that demon-infested place, 700 people died from overdosing in it. It's the worst drug in the world now. It is called fentanyl. F-E-N-T-A-N-N-Y-N-Y-L. Fentanyl. It's a terrible. Facebook this week had a story of a three-month-old baby in Los Angeles who was in the field and somebody left some of those tablets and he took them and he died one time. We are living. We are dwelling in a grand and awful time. This is not the time to play church. This is the time to stand up for Jesus. This is the time to read the word. This is the time to pray without ceasing. This young lady, her virginity was sacrificed in 1997 in California. The mountain of demon possession. These guys, she got close to a drug group. Four of them raped and killed this girl. They killed her in a place called San Luis Obispo County. She was a virgin, and she was 16 years old. But she started to smoke the ganja with them, and they would take her to a place called the Pipe of Death, the Pipe of Death in San Luis Obispo County, and they would smoke the ganja, listen to the rock music, drink the alcohol. That's what they would do. And then they had a star of David that was etched, etched on their upper arm, and they would cut it and drink the blood. This is what they would do. One night while doing that, the devil, all right, the devil just got into them and they raped that girl, raped that girl after they drank the blood. Now that night, all right, let's go back a minute if you don't mind. That night, yes, that night, not only did they drink the blood, but they mixed the blood in what was called a satanic chalice. And there was a particular song. The devil is on overdrive because he knows he has but a short time. And every day, that time is getting shorter. So they mixed the blood in a satanic chalice and listened to a rock song. And the song went like this. It is called Sacrifice. Sacrifice to Lucifer, my master. The words say, raise the challenge. Slash her across her breast, drink the blood, sacrifice to Lucifer, my master. Now, the Freemasons and the Odd Fellows and those in the lodges do not want you to know the strategies of Satan in these last days. But that is exactly what they did. So they drank the mixed, synergized portion of blood. And when they drank it, demons, one guy confessed, the oldest guy confessed. The demons, they heard the voices of demons uh, around there, pushing them to rape her. And they raped her while she was alive, 
took the knife, did exactly as the song said, slashed her across her breast. What a mountain, a satanic mountain. Some would say a luciferic mountain. There's another guy who is recent now in 2022. His name is Little Nas X. And in that song, he's glorifying homosexuality and bisexuality and transgenderism and bestiality. That is what he is doing. And he claims, all right, to have left heaven on an elevator and ended up in hell and had sex with the devil. All right? And then sex with the dead. It is called necrophilia. Sex with the dead. Hello, we are living. We are dwelling in a grand and awful time. This is a time to get right with God. This is a time for repentance. This is the sealing time. Four boys raped and killed this girl. We will move on to the next text, my dear friends, that I think is so relevant today. Amen, brethren. Revelation 12:12. 12, 12. It says, therefore rejoice the heavens and he that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil is coming unto you, having great wrath, because he knows that he had but a short time. And he knows uh, uh, that his barbecue is booked. He knows, my dear friends, uh, that he will not taste the eternal life. Uh, he knows uh, that he gave up the last chance of the cross of Calvary. He knows, my dear friends, uh, that his doom is sure. He knows that. But the, 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 the Bible is telling us, uh, Rejoice ye heavens, uh, and either dwell in them, woe to the inhabitants of the earth. The inhabitants of the earth. Now, we are no longer 7 billion. We are 8 billion. Could I tell you something? They are comparing the number of Seventh-day Adventists with the number of people on the planet. And what we have seen is that the population of the world is multiplying, all right, faster than Christianity is multiplying. In fact, some Christian churches and denominations are dying. They are losing more than they are gaining. So that is an absolute Christian crisis in Christendom. And the good book says, Rejoice in heavens and he that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil is coming unto you, having great wrath, because he knows that he had but a short time. The devil under normal circumstances is a wicked beast. He's a crocodile of vampire proportions. The devil himself, my dear friends, in a normal state is vicious, if you please. But now, the good book says, he has great wrath. So you can imagine, if under normal circumstances, he will kill and rape and torture. You can imagine, in these last days, he has great wrath. Means he is psychotic. He is toxic. That is where he is there. And he's targeting every human being. He wants company in hell because he has a wrong idea that the more people in hell is the less fire for him. But the fire God has for Satan is for him and him alone. Have mercy. And he must understand that. Oh, he has great wrath. He knows that he had but a short time. Let me tell you something. Huh? I listened to the BBC today. The most radical and liberal media house in the world. You know what they are saying today? That the world is in trouble. They sound like prophets. They understand that time is running out for this planet. Time is running out for the atheists. Time is running out for the gamblers. Time is running out for all of us online tonight and in the church. Time is running out. And that is where we are. And we have got to know the devil is for real. The devil, my dear friends, has a plan to destroy all of us. Uh, that is his plan. Total destruction. But I praise God, my dear friends, while the devil has some power, our God has all the power. He could do what he wants, when he wants, where he wants, uh, and however he wants. Uh, he is an awesome God, my dear friends. Uh, and the devil has to bow down to him. Uh, when Jesus Christ comes up, uh, the devil will have to bow down to him. The atheists uh, and the agnostics uh, and the skeptics uh, uh, and the rich men and the poor men uh, who are not saved uh, will have to confess uh, that Jesus is Lord. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, let's go to this community. These are some shocking pictures. 
I mean to see a man French kissing a man. Recently, I say this softly, they had a pity on Facebook of a parliamentarian who was married to a guy. Now, I don't know, Pastor, how true that is. Because you have electronical acrobatics. But this guy is also known to be involved in that kind of uh, business. Whether or not he got married to this white guy, I, I don't know. And I don't have a, a rich bank account to pay Ramesh to defend me. But I saw this guy kissing a white guy. Apparently, he's not racial at all. I saw it there. This, this nation is in trouble. Uh, is in trouble, my dear television guys. This nation is in trouble. The whole world is in trouble. You see, let me say this to you online. The world needs God, but the world does not want God. And that, that is the serious thing of where we are right now. I mean, I, I, I couldn't I could imagine guys' friends kissing each other like it was a girl they're kissing. Supposing the whole world went on this agenda, this homosexual agenda. We'll have no more babies. Are you hearing me, brethren? Now they're adopting children. Lord have mercy. Let me show you something. This one was, this one got to me. And I got this on Facebook. Huh? A triangle. A matrimonial triangle. They have matrimonial triangle too. I thought wife swapping was the worst thing. I thought contract marriage was the worst thing. But by the way, Paul didn't lie when he told Timothy, in the last days, perilous times shall come. Well, perilous times have come. That is 2 Timothy chapter 3. Am I talking the truth, Brother Ringer? Things we never, careful over hitting this, sir. The last time I hit a pulpit like this, it's split in two, you know. So much for my karate skills. Ladies and gentlemen, the love triangle, the husband and wife got married. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Husband and wife got married. The next time when the wife went in the house, the husband's male partner in the house. And he drew up a timetable. Guess what the timetable was? One night for the wife, the next night for his male partner. And they say they're all living happily ever after. Happily ever after, my bald head. What happily ever after? Let me tell you something. The girl didn't look happy at all. The girl didn't look happy at all, Brian. But these are the last days. Am I talking the truth, my dear friends? These are the last. I don't have it on the screen. I don't think I even wanted to put it in the PowerPoint. But there's a development now that I think is a shocking development. It is called the legalization of bestiality. In Europe, in a brothel, they, 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 they have human beings having sex with animals. And they are saying they want that to be legalized. I tell you, we are living, we are dwelling in a grand and awful time. Ladies and gentlemen, in Elijah's time, Jezebel's, watch this, watch this. Jezebel's toxic immorality was destroying Israel's morality. And she had a complicit husband. And he allowed the worship of Satan to come in. You know, I had an uncle. And he belonged to the satanic cult. Uncle in law. I want to say that. He wasn't my blood uncle at all. I don't know where my aunt picked him up. Picked him up somewhere in some den. But she picked him up. And one night she told me, you know, he was feeding demons. He was a member of the Freemasonic cult. She said to me, Bing! That's my home name. Not for none of you, you know. You have to be related to me. Pastor Brian could call me that. Not even the pastor, but anyhow. She said, Bing, my husband had a bottle of acid at 2 o'clock in the morning. And he was writing a name. I said, what name? She says, your name. And when she put it down in the acid bottle, the, the paper disappeared completely. Well, I work in a lab. I am a science man. So I understand that. But I told her, my name is written somewhere else. Did I hear you say amen? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. My name is written on the page, bright and fair. Not only on my certificates and my birth certificate and my driver's permit and my baptismal certificate. My name is written. And folks, let me say this to you. 
Hello, your bank account can't save you. Your aristocratic position cannot save you. Your class cannot save you. You have to have a walking, talking, living, transforming relationship with Jesus Christ. That's the only way. Hallelujah, my dear friends. That's the only way we can make it. Oh, brethren, in Elijah's time, he had to confront Jezebel. No, hold a minute. I want to share this with you. Elijah on Mount Carmel sounded like he had a big sense of humor. But nothing Elijah said there was irrelevant. Why? Who was Baal? Who was Baal? The God of rain. So when Elijah came up on the scene and he said it must be June or rain for this period of time. Jezebel got mad. She didn't get mad because she wanted to get mad. It was a time to get mad. She got mad because Elijah, on behalf of the God of Israel, let me tell you something. Elijah was a true representation of authentic belief in God, you know. Elijah loved God. No amount of demons. Uh, huh? You hear what Mary, Queen of Scots says? She said, I fear the prayers of John Knox more than all the armies of Europe. Pastor, that is what she said. She said, I fear the prayers of John Knox more than all the armies of Europe. When you are praying soul. Hello, let me tell you something. Jezebel killed a set of prophets. Obadiah revealed that. Am I talking the truth? And he had to hide a hundred of them in the cave. But she would never go close to Elijah. She said in her stupid husband, Ahab. All right? To behind, behind Elijah. But she ain't coming at all. Yes, monkey know what tree to climb. She ain't going there at all. Ladies and gentlemen, watch this text here. I love this text. This is one apart from John chapter 3. John chapter 3 is a boss chapter, you know. Yes, it talks about, you know, the issue of conversion. Uh, it talks about John 3.16, the love of God and the sacrifice of God. But this one, 1 Kings 18, 16 to 21, hear what it says. So Obadiah, who protected a hundred prophets, went to meet Ahab. That's after he encountered, all right, Elijah. And he effectively told Elijah, listen, you see you, you have special powers. All right? If Ahab finds me, and I told him, I saw you. I am a dead man. But if he finds you, you will disappear on him. He won't know what has happened. Now hold a minute. Obadiah had tremendous faith in Elijah's faith. Lord have mercy. You know people like that? You know, you look at us from body, they just say, oh boy, they, they're faithful. They're strong Christians. Uh-uh. We must think about having the same level of faith as Elijah, as Enoch. Come on, Elisha and John the Baptist. We must aim for the top. Come on. Huh? Higher than the highest human thought. Ellen White says, it's God's ideal for his children. Obadiah went to meet Ahab and told him, and Ahab went to meet Elijah. Now, remember, there was a death threat posted by Jezebel on the life. Okay? Now, I want to share something with you. Baal was not supposed to be a functional God 365 days in the year. When you do all the research, you will see where Baal only functioned for half of the year. So when Elijah said he must be sleeping, Elijah was a student of the culture he was attacking. Yes, and he knew, Elijah knew, and God knew. That Baal was supposed to be the rain god, controlling sunshine and rain. They gave credit to Baal. The apostate Israelites gave credit to Baal for that too. So Abediah went to meet Ahab and told him, and Ahab went to meet Elijah. Big story. Next verse. And it came to pass when Ahab saw Elijah, that Ahab said unto him, Are thou the he that troubled Israel? This blasphemous jellyfish of a man, all right, is asking Elijah if he's troubling Israel. How many out of place? If, hello, hey, hey, I told a Trinidadian that, man, he get all the letters of the alphabet. Imagine if he told a Trinidadian that, although he the troubled Israel. This is a man, all right, who has compromised all the principles of God. This is a man 
that allowed Jezebel to disrespect the Sabbath. This is the man that had Jezebel huh? giving the virgin girls of Israel on the altar of Baal to the priests of Baal. This is a man who had destroyed huh? the, 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 all the altars unto God. Come on, my dear friends, and built altars to Baal. This is a man that encouraged uh, demon worship and satanic worship in Israel. This is what this guy did. And he has the bold facity. You hear my language? And he has the bold facity uh, to tell Elijah if he's troubling Israel. Elijah, a man who worshiped God. Elijah had faith in God, who upheld the principles of Jehovah Jireh, the God that provides. Elijah, who loved God with a passion. Elijah, who had a, a, a deep feeling, a profound love for the people of God, the remnant people of God. But hello, even in Israel, many of them had bowed their knees to Baal, but there are some who refused to do that. I thank God for the members of the church who stand true to principle, true as duty as the needle to the pole. I don't hear the trouble Israel. And what is what, what? Look at the answer in verse 18. Look at the answer. And he answered, I have not troubled Israel, but you and thy father's house, in that he have forsaken the commandments of the Lord and that was followed Balaam. So the majority of people in the church, let me tell you something. I am going to make a statement every night in this church. And hear what I'm going to say, starting tonight. In five rivers, on online, I don't know how many of you have or are worshiping Baal. I don't know. But I want you to know that God knows. Because he sees everything. Do you know before you sin, God knows you're going to sin? I mean, that is, when I study that, that is awesome. Before you sin, God knows. In fact, before you are born, God knows exactly when you would sin. I find that's heavy. He said, I have not troubled Israel, but thou and thy father's house, in that you have forsaken the commandments of the Lord, and thou hast followed Balaam. That's what you're doing. Verse 19, quickly. Let's run on. Now therefore send and gather to me all Israel unto Mount Carmel. And the prophets of Baal, 450. And the prophets of the groves, 400. Which eat at Jezebel's table. Now hold a minute here. What you have, let me tell you something. Uh, one with God is a majority. 850 demon worshipping prophets. Versus one prophet of God. One authentic ambassador of Jesus Christ. One who refused to compromise. One who believed in the word. One who prayed without ceasing. One who was by the brook Cherith. And ravens came and fed him. One, my dear friends, who trusted God everywhere. One who knew that God has to move us out of our comfort zone. So we can develop the character that we need to develop. I don't know about you, but let me tell you something. I don't think this will last very much longer to last. Because look at, look at the climate control. Who is the world's leading public official? You have any idea? Who is the world's international leading official? The guy's name is Antonio Gutierrez. He is the United Nations Secretary General. He is the most powerful public official. He made two statements recently. Number one, he says we are just a breath away from nuclear annihilation, nuclear destruction. Of course, he's talking about the situation in Ukraine and Russia also. And then he says, climate change indicates, I'm quoting him from memory, he says, climate change reveals to us that we are on the highway to hell. Now he's saying that, number one, he's saying, we are just a hair's breath away from nuclear destruction. Just today, just today, the United States government revealed a B-bomber that is a nuclear bomber uh, with nuclear material. And that didn't happen. This guy, Antonio Duqueris, who is the number one public servant in the world, 
the number one international foreign affairs expert, is saying nuclear destruction, number one, and number two, global warming, glaciers melting, polar bears uh, uh, floating on ice hopelessly and helplessly. This world is not our home. That is why they want to open up all these space colonies. But hello, when it comes to God, there is no hiding place. We can hide from our mother, hide from our husband, hide from our wives, but we cannot hide from God. Praise the Lord. Did I hear you say praise the Lord? You cannot hide from God. Let's go to verse 20. So Ahab sent unto all the children of Israel and gathered the prophets together unto Mount Carmel. This is assembly time. This is marching up the mountain time. Uh, the venue, have mercy. You know, at the end of the story, you know what happened? Listen to me carefully here. At the end of the story, Elijah tore down the groves of Baal and built up the altar to Jehovah. But that is what Elijah always wanted to do. A preacher of righteousness must have a goal in his soul. He absent unto all the children of Israel and gathered the prophets together unto Mount Carmel. And what did he say? I love what he said. Huh? This, to my mind, after John 3.16, is the most critical text in the Bible. 1 Kings 18, verse 21. And Elijah came unto all the people and said, How long halt it between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. And the people answered him, not a word. Why didn't they answer him? Because they were totally embarrassed. They had a, a kind of synergized religion. Truth and error, Babylon. Huh? The wine of the wrath of a fornication. Revelation 14.8, the second angel's message, uh, the drinking of the wine of the wrath of a fornication. Uh, the third angel says, poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. God's anger we're talking about now. Uh, the omnipotent God, uh, the omnipresent God, uh, the omniscient God, uh, the invisible God. Are you hearing me, preaching? Uh, I don't care where you are, God will find you. If you're in a nightclub, God will find you. If you're unfaithful to your wife, God will find you. If you're taking a chance to smoke, drugs uh, and destroy your brain and your heart, God will find you wherever you are. If you're cheating on the job, God will find you. If you're cheating in the examination room, God will find you. God knows. Uh, God sees. Uh, God uh, has all knowledge. Uh, God is almighty. And let me tell you something. No problem you have is too big for God. God can destroy every problem. We move on, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, did you see this in Trinidad? I know exactly the spot. You know, during the lockdown, I was in Maruga regularly. Police stopped me, and I told them I was on duty. This is in St. Mary's Village. Her own daughter locked the room and stabbed her several times. You know, everybody trying to find out why. Well, I, I don't know why, but I am sure... Because they, 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 her husband, the daughter's father, said that she told him, don't come close. And by the time he went to hold her, she ran into the house, she locked up the house, she locked up the room, and stabbed the mother several times. I want to tell you, that is not natural. That is the power of evil. Recently here, on a spot not too far from here, I spent six hours with a demon-possessed girl. Pastor, six hours. During one of the prayers, she fired a kick at the next elder of Digo Martin and myself. Fired kicks at us. Let me tell you something. When you go out there, you must make sure God is with you. When you go out there in the world to witness, uh, you must make sure that the power of the blood of Jesus Christ uh, rests upon you. Ladies and gentlemen, let's understand Baal now, a god of rain, huh? and the god who went to sleep. Huh? That is the issue of Baal. Now Elijah is calling the shots. Many times the prophets of Baal, huh? 850 of them. Let's keep moving the PowerPoint. Huh? Watch this. Many times uh, the 850 prophets of Baal all right, brought strange fire. 
In other words, when Jezebel heard what Elijah told her husband, bring them on Mount Carmel and let's bring fire. I don't mind. I am not afraid of fire. Jezebel was accustomed of bringing strange fire. She was a strange fire specialist. So when she heard Elijah say, the God that answers by fire is the true God, she, she rejoiced. She said, aha, I have Elijah now. He chose in fire. Fire will be the test of the true and living God. Let me tell you something. Eli Jezebel could have bring fire any other time. But when it's to prove huh, who is the true God, she was her fire building, manufacturing capacity was completely paralyzed. She couldn't bring fire because God stopped her. Hello, could I tell you something? Your enemies may want to kill you. Your enemies may want to fire you. But when you have the fire of the Holy Ghost, their strange fire can't touch you. If God wants to promote you, not a man could demote you. And if God says you must live, no amount of finger-licking demons oh, could cause you to die. Because God is an awesome God. Hallelujah. Remember in Pharaoh's courts? Rods turned into serpents. And then the magician serpents were eaten by Moses' serpents. That's a God I love. That's a God with power. Amen? That's a God with power. Huh? All the time they throwing down the, the rods. Moses did that. And serpents came. And Pharaoh did the same thing. And hello, God allowed Pharaoh to do that. Because sometimes God wants to humiliate the enemy in a way that they would never recover. Let me tell you something. All of us have enemies. But when God has his protective shield around you, no weapon, come on. I tell you, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. The eternal God is our refuge and underneath our water, the everlasting arms, the arms that held up Joshua. Oh, let me tell you something. God has all the solutions for every problem and the strength that you need. God has the strength. That is why you must have the shield of faith. That is why you must have the breastplate of righteousness. That is why you must have the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Hallelujah. First Kings 18, 27 to 30. And it came to pass. There's a silence. This is victory time. Jezebel had ruled Israel in a bloodthirsty fashion. Long before there was Isis, there was Jezebel. How did Jezebel kill the prophets of God? She decapitated them. She took off their heads. And it came to pass at noon that Elijah said unto them, mock them. Now notice the word mocked. Now what does mock mean in the Hebrew language? Let's discuss that. I have heard several sermons on this, but let's deal with mock. The word mock there means taking their belief system, all right, and proving that it is false. So he knew, he knew their belief system. He knew that they believed that Baal controlled rain. He knew that they felt that Baal wasn't active for half of the year. Elijah let me tell you something. If you want to reach people, study their belief system. Cry aloud. Cry aloud. For he's a God. Either he's talking or he's pursuing or he's in a journey. Watch this. Watch this. Oh, per adventure, he sleep it and must be awake. They believed that Baal was asleep for part of the year. And Elijah knew that. Have mercy. Let me ask you a question. And I want to ask all those online, all over the world, let me ask you a question. Does Elijah sound fearful now? Answer me. Does he sound fearful? There's a fearless prophetic beast. That's who Elijah was. He's not sounding like he's scared of Jezebel, huh? the ISIS murderer in the Old Testament. He's not scared. He says uh, he's talking. Perhaps he's in a committee meeting. All right, or he's pursuing, or he's in a journey. Oh, poor adventure. Poor adventure means you ever consider you could be asleep. 
Your God could be asleep. You have to wake him up. Lord, have mercy. Elijah, verse 28, come on. And they cried aloud, cut themselves after their manner with knives and lancets till the blood gushed out upon them. This may be a shock to us. It wasn't a shock to Elijah. Because when they couldn't get their gods to, to work, they believed. The bare, bare worship. The worship of the Zidonians. Remember, remember, Jezebel's father was from Zidon, that we call Tyre. Huh? And that was their belief system. That if you're praying to God and God doesn't answer you, you have to sacrifice your blood. So what they were doing was not, hello, a shock to Elijah. And they cried aloud and cut themselves after their manner. Oh, hallelujah. With knives and lancets till their blood gushed out upon them. Uh, they, they, were, they were, you call that self-mutilation. They were committing suicide. Verse 29, quickly, what it says, ladies and gentlemen. All right, guys in the, in the room, you're not following me. Verse 29, let's see what it says. And it came to pass when midday was passed and they prophesied until the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice that there was neither voice nor any to answer nor any that regarded. Verse 30, see what it says there. And Elijah said unto all the people, come near unto me. And all the people came near unto him and he repaired the altar of the Lord that was broken down. Now hold a minute. That is what got Elijah mad. All right? That is what got Elijah mad. I want you to recognize this. He repaired the altar of the Lord that was broken down. Who broke down the altar? Anybody have any idea tonight? Who broke down the altar? Ahab and his decorated jambiacious wife, Jezebel. She broke down the altar. And that had Elijah. So hold a minute here. Not only are you sacrificing the virgin members of the church to Baal, but you're breaking down the altar of worship. To God, to Jehovah, that is what she was doing. The altar was broken down. Let's go to verse 36. And it came to pass at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice. Elijah had timing. That Elijah the prophet came near and said, Lord God of Abraham, of Isaac, and of Israel, let it be known this day. That is a prayer for us to pray. When in a crisis, uh, pray this prayer. Let it be known this day that thou art God in Israel. Lord have mercy. And that I am thy servant. And that I have done all these things uh, at thy word. This is Elijah. Hear me, O Lord. Uh, hear me, O Lord. That his people may know that thou art the Lord God. Uh, and that thou hast turned their heart back again. Uh, and then the fire of the Lord fell. Praise God. Hello, God is not just a prayer hearing God. God is a prayer answering God. Fire, he prayed for fire. Jezebel prayed for fire. 850 prophets prayed for fire. No fire. But as soon as Elijah prayed, fire came down. The fire of the Lord, not the fire of Satan, but the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice and the wood and the stones, stone and all getting licked up. And the dust and licked up the water that was in the trench. I don't know about you, but I love God. Do you love God, my dear friends? When God makes a promise, God keeps the promise. Revelation 14, 9 to 10 is my last text. And the third angel. You see, the first angel says, fear God. The first angel deals with what I call the theological triangulation. Creation, worship, and judgment. All right? Fear God and give glory to him for the hour, for the time, for the moment of which judgment has come. And then we have, my dear friends, the second angel. Babylon is fallen. Huh? Confusion. Babylon has fallen. But watch the third angel. And the third angel followed them saying with a loud voice, if any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, mm -hmm. verse 10 says, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. I want to share a story with you. Let's go to the last slide. The whole of nature 
is moving in an unpredictable and violent fashion. This volcano has not erupted in 38 years. The Mono Loa, Mona Loa volcano in Hawaii has not erupted in 38 years, but erupted now. Ladies and gentlemen, God, the Almighty, is sending signs. You felt the earthquake recently? I was up, and I find out earthquake was li lingering long. They said measured 5.1 on the Richter scale. Many more earthquakes to come. Many more fires to come. Let me tell you something. We are in a state of crisis, not just in Trinidad, but all across the world in a state of crisis. I was in a, what they call 40 days. Well, I don't believe in that. But the Presbyterian leader, his member had died. I was closer to her than he was, to be frank with you. She died of cancer. She had colorectal cancer. Lord have mercy. They had a cut off peace and cut off peace. And after I prayed for about four years ago, she went in remission for like four years. God gave her four years to get it right. I didn't even know she was a Presbyterian. She died and they buried her. After this time had passed, last week, the Presbyterian pastor asked me to preach the sermon at the 40 days ceremony. I argue with him. I'm glad I get a chance to preach. And brethren, I preach in the name of Jesus. I preached. I preach about the God who works miracles. I preach about the God who will turn water into wine. I preach about a God who wrote the Ten Commandments on Mount Sinai. I preach about a God who is the creator and a God who is the redeemer. Our God. The El Shaddai, the Almighty God, the Word of God made flesh that dwelt among us. Oh, never see Presbyterians shouting amen and things like that. Anyhow, after it was finished, a member came to me. He said, Pastor, I am no big Christian, but I believe God still works miracles. I said, why you say that? He said, Pastor, my brother has leukemia. He says, I want to pray to God. But I say, God might insult me. Because I haven't prayed to God for a long time. He said, I want to pray to God. He said, I was so bashful, I wouldn't close my eyes. He said, I look up in the heavens and say, God, my brother needs to go to Florida to the Mount Sinai Jewish Hospital. They say it's the best cancer hospital in the world, huh? Mount Sinai. So I want him to go there, but I don't have the money. He's a lawyer. He said, I don't have that money. I need $500,000. This is the Presbyterian guy who is not going to too much church and stuff. Who is embarrassed to pray to God. But he wants God to heal his brother. He said, Pastor, when I finish, pray. He said, I ain't close my eyes once. I'm so afraid what God will do me. I ain't close my eyes at all. He said, I ain't close my eyes at all. You see, he needs to understand the character of God. Some people feel God is a revengeful God. God is not a revengeful God. God loves us unconditionally. That is the God we serve. Come on, somebody say amen. That's the God we serve. He said, when I finish praying, I go into my house. He says, I have a rich client, a woman. She says, you're looking dumb. You're looking sad. What's the problem? You're looking sad. He said, yes. I don't want to tell you. I feel it's unethical to tell you. You're my client. But I need $500,000. I don't know who to turn to. She dipped into her pocket and pulled out her, her credit card. She said, use it. He said, what limit? She said, no limit. This is a multi-millionaire. He said, I went to Mount Sinai Hospital. Let me tell you something. Huh? Let me tell you something. When God... It's determined to help you. No amount of demons could stop him. 
when you want to be held by God, you cry out to God. And may I resound in blasphemous, even forget your past sins, seek forgiveness for them, and put your hand in the hand of the lion of the tribe of Judah. Come on. He says, just examine him. They came to him in the hospital. Mount Sinai, 20,000 U.S. To hire all the medical team. Credit card again, 20,000 U.S. The procedure done, 20,000 U.S. And to recover, he says when he check it out, the whole procedure costs 500,000 TT dollars. He said, my brother is well. Let me tell you something. And let me tell the whole world, those online, the God of Elijah has the same power today. Did I hear you say amen? He could bring fire, burn up your problems. Huh? Long before you're aware of your problem, our God has a solution. And that was the faith that Elijah had. If you love God, somebody say amen. Uh, if you have faith in God, somebody say hallelujah. The God of Elijah is our God. Come on, my dear friends. The God of Elijah is our God. Could we sing one verse, Kevin? Pass me not, O gentle Savior. Hear my humble cry. One verse. Just one verse. Hallelujah. Why don't others do what call in? Do not pass me by. Oh, isn't God special? Isn't God an awesome God? Yes, praise God. Go ahead, Kevin. Let's all stand. Yes, hear my humble cry. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Do not, do not. Do not pass me by, Savior. Savior, Savior. Praise the Lord. Hear my humble cry. Oh, yes. Thank you, Jesus. Do not. Do not pass me by. Father in heaven, bless those in the church tonight. Bless those online. Hearing your word and seeing your servant preach with power. Those who have not given their hearts to you, may they make that decision tonight. And so until tomorrow morning, when we shall preach on the seal, have faith in God, Jesus is your best friend. Have faith in God, 